This is the top video game podcast of the week from HorribleNight.com for Thursday, October 17th, 2013. Come at you live on Twitch TV slash Horrible Night. I'm your host, Justin Lacey. My guest this evening, the only Aaron McNeil I know. How's it going, Aaron? I hope you don't know any others. You're the best be... Aaron McNeil I know. <laughs> so awkward. And also the Have worst. us both on the cast. <laughs> I want to meet this guy. Meet, I want to meet this other Aaron. I think... So... So like Dark Aaron, he would he would sh- he would be shaven, hey. right? Oh. <laughs> Dark Aaron. <laughs> yeah, uh, other Aaron would have uh, long flowing hair, gotcha. but no facial hair. <laughs> I was, and he would just be white. <laughs> did you did you ever see Scott Pilgrim the movie? Yeah, uh, that's one of my favorite scenes. Is the, uh, the 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 dark Scott Pilgrim, and they end up becoming that friends. Oh, he's, oh, he's a pretty cool guy. <laughs> just, yeah. I like him. I love that movie. Yeah. I really do love that movie. Um, I just got a piece of art from that. One of my buddies did a a piece from from that, and uh, I was pretty happy with that. Nice. That, that movie holds up. It's really, really, really fast. Like, it is, it's, yeah, it's like ninety minutes in and out. Never really stops. Um, I think it's a lot of fun. So. I saw it twice. Oh man, I opened the door for some interesting, colorful comments uh, with that intro. But this is an inter- <laughs> sure it is. this is the interactive podcast from Horrible Night, where we ask you for your best and worst of the week in gaming, and we go over the same. Um, but what else? What else have you been up to outside the world of video games? Good, good work. You almost took a drink, but you saw the question yeah. coming. <laughs> I was like, oh, oh, he's talking to me. Oh. Um, so pretty much this past weekend was me cleaning my house. That's boring shit. Well, oh. <laughs> but it has to be done. You're like when you're done cleaning. No one talks about so autumn amazing. cleaning. Yeah, autumn cleaning, <laughs> fall cleaning. We've had but to do that. I was because we've had like an in, like as it gets colder, or we live next to a pond, and we've got like uh, you know we live on a slab, so there's no basement. But like for whatever reason, the spiders just they. They come in full force oh, for a couple weeks. I know what you're talking about. It's, yeah. been, it's been terrifying. My wife it hates spiders. I hate them too, but in, in a different way, like a like an angry axe murderer kind of way. I hate yeah. spiders. I hunt them down. I do a spider. Yeah. I do a spider check every time I get home, and uh, <laughs> they have three places they like to hang out, and uh, I need to burn all of those places down. Fuck spiders. <laughs> I'm just imagine like you open a room and then there's just spiders sitting in chairs playing cards and stuff. And you're like, oh shit, he found out where we hang out. <laughs> they, uh, they, che- they, cheese it. I mean, I think spiders are pretty smart. I think they, you know, they're always kind of on the hunt and they build traps. They're, I could see them playing cards. Like, that would be awesome. Would- <laughs> While they wait for a prey to enter the web. Yeah, so all the cleaning was not just for fun. I had a friend from back home in the St. Louis area come visit me all the way, made the trip, like three hours, two and a half hours, um, to my house just to visit me. He, his wife, and his like five-year-old son. Oh, cool. And so I'm thinking, what in my house do I have that will entertain a five-year-old boy? Mm-hmm. And then I remembered last year I bought Teenage Mutant, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the original uh, collection, uh, the original cartoon. Oh, okay. It's like... 20 something discs, 100 and something episodes. And I'm like, I haven't opened this thing yet. We are going to have a marathon. Fucking blast. Yeah. So I opened it up. It comes in a little like turtle van and you can roll it like an actual toy. And I'm like, my God, I'm glad I waited to actually have people around to open this thing up. We watched maybe a couple episodes and he was like, I'm done. Oh, <laughs> not hold, but his, did, not, did not hold up. Yeah. I guess. I guess he didn't hold his attention. He, but also, that brings me to point number two. Most people know I have huskies, and so my friend and his wife are more cat people. But their son was in love with one of my huskies, Rose, mm-hmm. who is the red one. Okay. And he did not like the other one so much, Iris, which is the husky I picked out. <laughs> but it, it's because, and so she's gray and white, so looks like a husky, whatever. But she's so hyper and stupid. <laughs> that she just she wants to like lick him and jump on him and he's like no no and I think I also scared him by saying you know I had him outside and he's like can we let them in I'm like no we let them in she will get you oh that's why I scared the shit out of yeah. him yeah <laughs> yeah and so he's like oh this one's calm and easy but the other one's like jumping at the door and stuff so you know fuck that one 
let me play with this one. And so my wife's like, she's like jokingly getting upset, like, oh, poor Iris, you know, no one wants to play with her. And I'm like, oh, she's dumb. She'll forget about it <laughs> in an hour after they leave. And I'll give her a bunch of attention then. Um, and so it was a fun time. Cool. My, uh, we my... played Wii U. How, how was, how was that? What, what's, what's the next generation think about the Wii U? He had a lot of, fu- he had a lot of fun with that. Uh, Did you Rain he's, Man? He's. I don't. I got Rayman on the Xbox, okay. which is kind of. <laughs> I didn't expect that. Didn't expect that. Things. Oh yeah, you got that before yeah. you had the Wii U. So never mind. That's not as yeah. So crazy as otherwise, I, I would have done it the right way. But we played New Super Mario Brothers U. I bought it the day before, first time playing that. And my wife brought up a good point about that game too, and I'm like, I couldn't quite pinpoint what was souring me about playing New Super Mario Brothers, but it's the fact that we just played Rayman Legends. And that was like so charming and entertaining, mm-hmm. mixed with the fact that when two people play that game, you don't really hurt each other's space. Like you don't collide into each other. Mm-hmm. And Mario's just all about you know one Jump person on jumps onto a narrow platform, other person jumps over there, and you're trying to respect each other's space and not kill each other. And I'm like, this is just way too much <laughs> stressful work. It could be so much more fun if you didn't do it this way. That's... Yeah, if we just pass through each other and could just like run through a level together, that would be more fun. I don't know why Nintendo thinks I want to necessarily jump on my wife's head or vice versa over yeah. and over again and fall into holes and we just both die over and over. Don't you, it's fun to kill each other. Come on. <laughs> it's fun. It's whimsical. Those Italians kill each other. <laughs> oh, man. I don't know. There's, I love New Super Mario Brothers U, but like, I don't know. I've been watching uh, Super Mario 3D Land stuff, 3D World stuff, and there's something That's... soul. There's something soulless about the 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 new Super Mario Brothers series. It's like, yeah, <laughs> it's just like the pre- it just has the presentation layer layer of Mario, right? It's got all the, but there's it's missing some meat. It's missing, I don't know. I agree. It's like simple Mario. Like they, I don't know. It doesn't. It doesn't does like the bare minimum from mm-hmm. what you expect out of a Mario platformer. But I even told her, I'm like, I bought this game. And now I question it now that my company has left because I really just want to play 3D World more than this. Oh. I mean, I'm, I still might be my game I'm most excited about for the next few months. I have to look at the full Definitely. list, but um, I've been putting that off for whatever reason. Um, holy shit, did all the TV come back? Like, I was kind of worried. All the TV. I was kind of worried after Breaking Bad, like, it was going to be a little bit down, but whole, like, I subscribed to three shows this week, um, and I have. And that's how I judge how into things I am. So I've been going through my The Killing <laughs> Marathon, which is about over. Um, Sons of Anarchy was no already going killing. on. But I subscribed to the new season of Supernatural, the new season okay. of American Horror Story, Coven, which I'll get get to in a second. And then what was the other show? That, oh, The Walking Dead. Fucking Walking Dead. Um, Walking Dead. All those I did not show- catch that season premiere. All those shows are back. Oh, we were talking today. The Walking Dead just does not give a shit about its gore anymore. It's just like, they have gone so over the top with their zombie kills, it's just, now it's just more of it and all of it at once when it gives it to you. It is just, <laughs> it is so disgusting, it's awesome. Uh, <laughs> are there scenes of just everyone having like a dramatic conversation, but at the same time, zombies are just stumbling in and getting murdered? <laughs> kind of, yeah, actually, yes. In this opening, yes. There, it, it's, it's... It's ridiculous. Rick, what are we going to do? He's just cutting a zombie's head off. I'm thinking we're going <laughs> to find a way out of this. <laughs> what do you want for dinner tonight? Um, <laughs> um, but uh, American, Horror st- some shit. American Horror Story had the biggest impact on me. Um, so I started watching that show. Um, you know, this is the third season. And when I first started watching the show, I figured it was going to be kind of a, a niche show. Like, um, yeah. I like I like horror the horror genre, and I just figured it would have limited appeal, be kind of like my, you know, my show kind of off to the side that I wouldn't take it very seriously, but I get more and more excited for this show as it keeps going, because every season they change their plot line, and, um, okay. so this season focuses on witches, and, um, Kathy Bates is one of the new, uh, members of the show, which is, which is awesome, um, <laughs> and they basically tell the story of, that 
all the witches that were persecuted in Salem um, to escape, they ran da- they ran as far away as they could get, and they ended up in New Orleans. So the whole thing kind of takes place. It takes place in New Orleans, modern day, and it's going to have a lot of ties to like uh, like voodoo as well, and <laughs> jambalaya, and uh, yeah, and and and, <laughs> and crawfish and <laughs> jazz music. Um, and Mardi Gras. Um, no, no. Um, this is all the topless women you want. Yeah. Um, so I watched the first episode Eat of that, it. and it's off to a great start. So um, I think this season is probably going to be more accessible for people, and that's the that's the thing. You don't have to go back and watch any of the older seasons. They're all standalone kind of mini series each season. So um, if you like witch st- nice. witchcraft stuff, um, I recommend checking it out. So I have never watched American Horror Story, but I thought it won some kind of a. Whatever they call it, TV awards, Emmys, or some it shit. It won a bunch of Emmys. I know it won a bunch of Emmys the first season, and the thing was, it wasn't in the traditional category of, you know, comedy or drama series where everything else yeah. is. It was off in its own mini series category because technically oh, yeah, these yeah. are end of yeah. So I'm not I sure. Remember how, that. I'm not sure if it worked the second time, but technically, you know, it's kind of a new show every season. So it's a, uh, it's interesting. I I I, I kind of hope that other other shows take that idea and just like find some themes to redo, but to do it in different time periods with different people and see what happens. It's 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 pretty. Go cool to concept. space. Go to yeah. <laughs> yeah I want American <laughs> Horror Story in space. Give me a yeah yeah. I mean, it could be like uh, what was that movie Lockout, where it's like the giant space prison. Yeah, I haven't watched that. But it's a, it's a giant space asylum just full of craziness. I think that would be awesome. Like it's working for Amnesia. They're going to space, so. Oh, well, shit. Man. Yeah. Have you seen any of those teasers for Soma? I have not. You need to watch that shit. That is... That is Everything's intense. going to space. Yeah. Intense. Uh, speaking of video games, game of the week time, let's let's see what Chad had to say today. Um, Gifford has been playing The Room on his on his tablet uh, since he has lots, nice. of, lots of travel time this week. I've actually heard good things about that as a, as a mobile Me game. Me too. Kind of a horror, tried it yet. horror puzzle experience. Um, uh, Coop- also, it's not the one with uh, about Lisa. You're killing me. <laughs> what was that movie? I don't know where you're going. You're tearing me apart. No. <laughs> you don't know? I don't know. It's uh, ah, crap. a... Ah, mo- crap. I'll tell you later. I'll tell you when you're older. I'll tell you later. Lisa, <laughs> The Room. I don't, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> There's a movie? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, there's a movie, but I can't remember anything about it. Maybe I'm wrong. You t- yeah, the first YouTube. Oh no, I'm right. It's you're tearing no, it's, me apart, Lisa. The room. Is, the, is the first <laughs> YouTube video that yeah. pops up. It's to- Tommy Wiseau. That's what his name is. <laughs> oh, it's oh. called the Room. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, C- Coop is playing Dead Island this week, and he's not sure why. Uh, Ethan checked that out uh, last week as well. Cole's game of the week. I don't. I don't understand this combination rocksmith slash final fantasy nine so but then he goes on to say that uh oh never mind that's his next answer so at the same time i didn't know he had rocksmith that 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 game seems pretty sophisticated as far as like teach you some guitar and i can't like they're still continuing to support that game so um he's gonna be a rock star now (laughs) And then uh, Neil Mars game of the week is Borderlands Two. Uh, I saw him streaming that uh, a little earlier today. What about? Well, actually, we'll start with me because uh, <laughs> you're you're gonna op- you're gonna open a a box of stuff. We so a box of collectibles. Yeah, um, we've <laughs> been um, uh, in our arcade challenge at at, at my work uh, this week. We've been playing a game called. I'm guessing on the pronoun ESP Raw Day, which is a bullet hell shoot 'em up from uh, the developer Cave. They that made the Dodon Pachi series. They make the like the traditional bullet hell games that you're thinking of. And um, the only other bullet hell game I played, spent any time with, was Ikaruga back on the GameCube, and it was a big hit on the Dreamcast, and just got green. Yep. Just got greenlit on PC, so be be on the lookout for it. And I'm buying uh, that. Um, the only thing I kind of want to say about this game, it's first, it's, first of all, it's weird because this is one of those games where, um, you know, the ship that you're controlling during this vertical shooter, 
um, is actually a, a teenager. It's a person that can fly. And, Excuse me? <laughs> yeah. So we, I kind of chose it because it was weird, but it also got really good reviews. It was kind of one of the on one of those um, best arcade games you haven't played lists. Um, and um, so it's 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 kind of interesting. Like you have your ma- your your main shot, you have a a power shot, and then this this. This third ability that basically forms a force field around your character, and then you absorb the power and shoot out like this this mega shot. Um, but um, but yeah, so it's just one of those games where there are just you're just there's constantly a flood of bullets on the screen, and more so than strategically moving around to shoot the guys, you're strategically moving around to avoid the bullets. Like you have to get into that whole you know shooter zen type of uh, gameplay. <laughs> Which I there are drugs for that. Yeah, yeah. I feel like I feel like you need some. Um, <laughs> I have never played one of these games seriously, and after playing it for four days in a row now, it I actually have anxiety about playing the game because it's so intense. Because you're I'm, you're constantly having to like just hammer on the trigger because you're constantly shooting, and then. If you do that, if I if I'm like hitting a button like that for more than you know, say four minutes straight, my arm kind of starts to shake. It's like I like if I if I move my <laughs> hand away from the button, my arm's still 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 trying to hit the button, um, and I just get really really into it as far as like trying to do- dodge everything. I get so tense that when the game is over, it's just like it's physically exhausting, and um, <laughs> your skin sheds off. It's just it's so it's 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 bizarre. It's a it's a very very stressful game and I didn't I didn't expect that. I thought it would be it's really fun, but every time I walk up to the machine to like try to get the top score, I um I don't know, there's just part of me is like I don't want to I don't want to I don't want to play this. It's just too intense right now. I don't want to be stressed out. So I can't remember the last time a game that wasn't amnesia or a horror game <laughs> gave me that type of anxiety. It's it's very strange. It's a different kind of fear. Yeah. Do you have you? Uh, do you have any shmup memories or experiences even close to that? Uh, what's that I, game? There's some game on Steam that's like about the pioneers. Jamestown, in Virginia. Yeah, Jamestown yeah. is like really the only game that I remember playing through recently. Like everyone talks about bullet hell games and are like, oh, this is a good one, like Igaruga, and then there's some other one. But like they all kind of blur together in my mind because I'm like, bullets are flying everywhere. You're either moving left or right, up to down. Mm-hmm. Oh, I might have lost Aaron. Something like that. Nope. Oh, like back. they're all the- Oh, you lost me? I'm here. I don't know what's going on. I lost your video. <laughs> Come on back, video. Yeah, bullet. Bullet held. Bull- you haven't been bullet held? <laughs> Is um, everything good? Yeah, we're back. We're back. Okay. I don't know what Happy Matt's talking about. That's f- <laughs> um, <laughs> Sookie blows hard. There, I played a bunch of Jamestown, and I feel like... Okay, first of all, I've heard that the game we're playing isn't, like, the most intense style of this game. But and I feel like Jamestown might be a notch even below that, because I had a lot of fun, and I was pretty relaxed when I was playing Jamestown. But at the same time, I've never played that for score. Like... That's a whole different mode in my brain when I'm playing a game. If I'm gonna like actually try for leaderboards score and put that extra level of yeah. stress, so I I, I I should try that to see if it's uh, how similar it is. But Jamestown's awesome, Ikaruga's awesome, and if you've got um, the uh, access to some of our other cave shooters, um, I don't know. I it it it, it it's a genre I haven't explored too much, and it was kind of kind of a kind of nice to dive in like heavily because i've never done that before so i don't i don't know if my uh stress level can take doing much more of it but uh (laughs) it's it's still (laughs) it's definitely an experience so um okay um you you should probably talk about that game that everybody's talking about this week that is it is it time (laughs) yeah so uh it's not we're done with grand theft auto 5 the internet is mostly moved on from that uh for now um and they have all moved on to uh, i i've actually made the joke that if i'm out on a geek site and i don't understand the joke it's most likely a harry potter reference a doctor who reference <laughs> or um now i would throw pokemon in that list because i just i i can't identify them uh let alone catch them all but you're attempting once again <laughs> 
what are these nerds talking about? Pokemans. <laughs> so yeah, Pokemon X and Y, Nintendo raising the bar on when a game comes out, releasing stuff on Saturday. <laughs> that was <for> all the <laughs> things. Just when I got used to their Sunday releases, what the hell are they doing? Yeah, like back in the day, they used to release games at the same time as everyone else, and then they moved to Sunday, and then here I am, Saturday morning, buying a Pokemon game, and uh, holy shit, I, I, okay, so I, I played Pokemon Black and White, and that was a fun time, and then Black and White 2 came out, and I just didn't play a whole lot of that, it was pretty much more of the same, but X and Y... It's like, I'm glad I have a 3DS because as a longtime Pokemon fan, making that leap into actual 3D looking polygonal Pokemon, just seeing them act out the animations rather than kind of just go through these weird kind of canned motions and just jiggling around on the screen, it really kind of brings that world to life. Is this, and, so this uh, is kind of the first time they've done that with the traditional Pokemon games? Not like outside of like, yeah, Stadium yeah, and that bullshit. Not Stadium and Snap and stuff. Yeah, but this is like the first real kind of you're seeing pokemon in 3d and they're fighting each other and you're actually going on the traditional adventure and it's just a lot of fun and it's nice that it's it's in your hand the weird thing about it it's on 3ds so you're expecting wow they're in 3d so surely there's like you can watch this stuff actually happen with the 3d slider Mm -hmm. turned up that game is so weird about when you can (laughs) use 3d and not use it that you Constantly while playing, I'll notice the green 3D light come on. Like, oh, you can do 3D now. You're in a battle. Weird. And then you get out of the battle, and the light turns off, and now you can't do 3D anymore. Then you go into a cave, and you can do 3D. And I'm like, what the hell? I'm just going to leave it off because it drains my battery anyway. <laughs> but, but it's so huh. choosy about when you can do it. What? First time I've ever seen that okay, happen. Yeah, I've never – I didn't know that was a thing at all. And that's bizarre. That is – I don't know what to make of it's, that. It's – yeah, it's really, really weird. I don't really use the 3D anymore. I, I actually I will use it. Me neither. I'll use it in the 2D games. Like I liked it in Steam World Dig, but um, like those those oh, types yeah. of, like those types of games, I think it looks fantastic. But it's just kind of a definitely you know a a a, a bonus more than anything. But uh, it really uh, is. So aside from the 3D graphics, I mean it's it's just Pokemon, right? Or, or people it, seem to be really a- really excited about it. It's yeah, it's really just more Pokemon. You you get two starters this time instead of one. Oh boy. Like hold, hold keep your pants on. It's crazy. <laughs> and so but you still go on the traditional adventure going from city to town. You're going to challenge eight gym leaders. You're going to fight the elite four. You're going to become the champion mm-hmm. and then you're I know gonna, all these phrases. Yeah. And then you're just going to take it to the next level and fight a bunch of strong random people for the rest of your life. When does Mewtwo but show up? That's all I know. Mewtwo shows up when you go to rehab because you've caught too many Pokemon and then he's your counselor but Seriously? you throw a Pokeball at him and you catch him. No, I don't I haven't gotten that far. <laughs> I wish that's what happened. You know, he's just trying to tell you like, you've got a problem and then you shove a master ball in his face and he's yours. <laughs> but so one of the new additions to this is Mega Evolution, which when I first heard about it, I think an article even mentioned that doesn't this remind you of Digimon that they just get pretty much evolved forever and got bigger and bigger and huger and stronger. And so this game, like your, your professor is telling you about mega evolutions and he's like, what is mega evolutions? We need to learn more about this. And apparently you're, you're just the right age, just the right time. That I'm really curious about what mega evolution is. <laughs> and so he sends you on a quest to go find out about that stuff. And Maybe a few gym battles in, you get a device that allows you to mega evolve certain Pokemon hmm. that are holding a specific item that you have to find. And it's like a once per battle kind of thing. So you can mega evolve a Charizard once a battle for the rest of your life. And Whoa. it's amazing. <laughs> it, it's, that, it, I'm it, picturing it like, really does nothing. I'm picturing just essentially kind of like a summon from. Like Final Fantasy, like you're you're basically is essentially it, you transform probably for the rest of the battle, or is it for like one move? It's for the rest of the battle, okay. and it doesn't even cost a move. Like you can do a move after you mega evolve. Oh, I shit. I feel like if I had made the game, I would have made it cost the move just to make it a little more riskier. But on the other hand, it's like look out, you know, you idiot that's like just hanging out on the street waiting to battle me. I'm gonna mega evolve this Charizard on you, and you're not even ready. Interesting. 
No, I can see through her, her up your ass. Like, here it comes. That's definitely like I mean, from for the competitive scene of that, that probably changes the game uh, quite a bit. Um, huh? Yeah, just a little bit. Especially, I mean, if you have a, a team with a where the majority of Pokemon can Mega Evolve, it's pretty much when do you do it? Because you are going to do it. There's no penalty to you, like using the Mega Evolution, but like who are you going to actually have do that? And sometimes it changes a Pokemon significantly. Like it might change their type around. Like mm-hmm. Charizard at this point in Pokemon is a fire flying. But in Pokemon X, if you Mega Evolve, he becomes a fire dragon. But in Pokemon Y, he stays fire flying. But becomes stronger. So there's like how did you, weird kind of rules. How did you choose X versus Y? I chose Y because my 3DS is red and the Y is red <laughs> and the X is blue. I'm really, I'm actually kind of glad it wasn't some deeper, like highly detailed reason. <laughs> I I looked at the graphs and the charts <laughs> and I, I logic it up. I grabbed the first one that was in in my face. Um, huh? Yeah, I, I just picked I just picked one. <laughs> I I mean I I bet this game's gonna be fucking huge for Nintendo. Like that's the, I mean the, I think I already said the 3DS is their best selling system already, and yeah I don't know it's just everything we say about being worried about their future like they're investing in the right place and like I just feel like the 3DS is gonna have another good couple years and Pokemon's kind of kicking that off again. Like I I've said it before I kind of miss the window with this. I feel like I miss the window with this and Power Rangers. I was like. Just a year or two too old uh, when when they came out. Yeah. So I have never played a Pokemon game, and uh, but I kind of, you know, I get I I get the 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 addictive side of it. But like at this point, I feel like I'm just so far out of the vocabulary. Like I wonder really what the percentage of players for Pokemon X and Y are the if they're players that have played Pokemon in the past versus do. Do new kids, do they get into this? Like, I feel like I'm yeah, so I'm far curious. behind. There's so many Pokemon at this point um, that there's no way I could ever feel effective in that game uh, because you you have all this... You, you know who all these characters are or who you're even looking for, and every Pokemon yeah. will be new to me, and I don't feel like uh, starting that, that at my age. <laughs> that would be overwhelming. There are over 700 Pokemon now. Were there, and... like, what was it, like 122 or something like that when it started? 151 when it started. Yeah. And that seemed like a whole lot back then, but it was like an attainable goal for like a kid back when Pokemon came out to, you know, get 150, 151 when they added Mew and then be like, I did it. You know, I did it, guys. All your friends got together. You trade it back and forth. We're done. But now there's like over 700, but it's kind of balanced out by the fact that Pokemon is much more online than it was when it first started. And so you could pretty much just dump Pokemon onto their trading station or whatever the hell they call it, and you can you can get everything. It might take a while because there's 700 of the damn things, but I mean you could trade with strangers and get the job done. You don't need your local friends to actually pick up a copy of Pokemon. Oh, so that's nice for a person you know in oh, his 20s. Oh, I never got that. So in order to get all of them originally, <laughs> you had to play with other other people. Gotcha. You either yeah, you had to play with other people or buy both and have two Game Boys. <laughs> oh shit! And then play that game twice. That is diabolical, Nintendo. That is that. That's like the old school Skylanders kind of stuff. Oh, shit. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Like I'm I'm kind of surprised they haven't. Skylander Pokemon yet, but there have been jokes about that, and yeah. people are seriously like, "No, don't give them ideas. That would be horrible. I would stop. I would have to stop." Pokemon Swap Force Infinity coming to a Nintendo near you. But yeah, I mean, you made a good point though about the conversion rate on like if you haven't I'm played curious. Pokemon in the past, you know, would you if you have a 3DS now, is it worth it to pick up X and Y? And a guy at Game Informer I saw today wrote an article about that he picked up like a copy of X. Mm-hmm. And started playing through it, having never done anything with Pokemon before in his life. And he made some valid points, like there he doesn't know what type is weak against another type. You know, mm-hmm. when it's a little more ambiguous, he's like, I get that. You know, water probably beats fire, but you know, I don't get like what is when water is against electricity. You know, which one actually wins in that battle? Does yeah. the water, you know, make the electric type short out? Does the electric, you know, ele- you know, shock the water? And I'm like, these are some valid points that, you know, to me, I know what does why, what. Why can't it make sense, like paper and rock? Yeah, it's not, you know, just a straightforward kind of thing, because there's, like, I forget how many types there are now. There's 
they added a fairy type yeah. to it, which is like the weirdest thing to even say. I, I have trouble, like, as a grown man that plays Pokemon, I have trouble <laughs> trying to defend to other people that they've added fairies to this game. I think I actually remember no. that from one of their uh, directs or the or the or the E three presentation. Like, um, yeah, uh, fairy versions of the characters. Man, yeah, there's, that that it's funny that there. that world is just it's so intimidating now. Like, it's I res- I respect it, and um, I know. I would have got as sucked in as anybody had had I been the right age for it, but um, it's uh, interesting to watch it from the outside, and it's that it's still as big as it is because, uh, yeah, like I said, people won't stop talking about this game this week. So, um, and it's you know, it sounds like yeah. quality wise, they did what they had to do there. So, um, it's but, it's great. It's just great to see coming from Pokemon Red to Pokemon X and Y, just the graphics and what what all they're actually doing with it. They made this one a little faster in terms of getting started, but I I will see it through. I'm happy. I'm happy I didn't play through Black and White too. Yeah, because I feel like that would just hurt my feelings on Pokemon. Gotta, like, I'm just bored of this. You gotta play like every other one or something. But um, yeah, every other one. But this one is the one to get if you've played Pokemon before and then stopped. This one's I think worth checking out and support that 3DS, which turned out to be amazing. Cool. Um, I I promised Matt and Krug Dog I would say the word Terraria during our game of the week discussion. So moving well, on, podcast to, over. <laughs> to, moving on to horrible night highlights. Um, I kind of wanted to first uh, announce again that uh, we we have announced the date for our charity marathon and and game jam. Uh, we've added the game jam this this year, but on November second we'll be live streaming at noon Eastern till noon on Sunday. Uh, live streaming all of our game marathon stuff and checking in with our uh, our group of developers that'll be working on games the entire time. And uh, throughout throughout the day, we'll be taking donations for Child's Play and uh, have some little special events uh, planned along the way as well. So stay tuned for that. I think we're gonna we're gonna get a good handful of horrible night people in the same location. Could be interesting. So. Um, could get messy. It could get messy. Um, <laughs> it'll also be interesting around. I wonder how much Halloween will play into it because uh, we're kind of in a public location that I don't know. Uh, Halloweeners could wander in. It could be interesting. Um, and then I we brought back a reply to all today on the site on Thursday. Um, I been, have been trying to find other ways to get some of the other uh, writers from the site and other podcasters. Um, uh, get them involved in some more of our articles. So we brought back our uh, weekly email discussion, and this week we tackled the Steam controller and other weird controllers throughout ga- gaming history. And there's uh, there's some gems in there, like the the Saturn 3D controller. Uh, I had not looked at that one in a while. That was that was messed up. Mm. So, <laughs> um, but we'll we'll have those on the site uh, every other week or so. We'll keep the keep that going, and you'll hear from different different members of our. Of our crew there. Um, what had your attention, Aaron? So Ethan put up a Fashion Police article, which I found absolutely hilarious. I'm glad he followed through with it, simply because... So my wife and I, we watch all these award shows, and then like E does their red carpet shit beforehand, and she's like, oh, we should check that out. And I'm like, I really could do without this, but whatever. Sometimes funny stuff happens. But I always hate... The, the fashion police stuff because I'm like men wear suits and those suits are like some color that you've come to ex- expect nothing excited about men's formal attire usually <laughs> but it's like always about women and it's always a bunch of snarky stuff like oh this woman's outfit is bleh and I'm like I don't see what's wrong with it this woman's outfit's amazing I'm like it looks just slightly better than the last woman's what, what? <laughs> but I love that Ethan did <laughs> a fashion police article about Jessica in Resident Evil Revelations Having only one pant leg. I hadn't actually seen her, it until he posted that. Holy yeah, shit. On her boat, you know, biohazard busting a tire on a boat. She's got one pant leg. What the hell? I'm glad he said something about it. It it was a funny read and, just to have him tear it down. And he, um, you know, people had pointed out her her one legged wetsuit before, but I didn't yeah. realize. I didn't. I actually got a bigger kick out of the fact that she was wearing like ridiculous heels. In the yeah, mount- mountains true. during a blizzard type of thing, like it's just, yeah. uh, and I kind of hope that he does um, 
does more of these video game fashion articles because uh, I hope so. It fits his writing style, so <laughs> it was it was it was pretty. It, funny. Was, it was pretty funny. We're trying to bring the silly back to Horrible Night too. We'll get we'll get more of those editorials. Uh, We're bringing silly back. <laughs> It's been too long. We've been like reviewing <laughs> games and offering critiques for too damn long. We got to mix it up. Um, <laughs> worst of the week in gaming. First to chat. Uh, I I did say before Nilmar's been uh, he he just got his new PC and has been streaming, but has run into the problem of uh, streaming solo can be uh, an, a, a different type of lonesome. So uh, I know he's looking for some multiplayer gaming and. Um, uh, but be on the lookout for his streams as well. Uh, Cole's worst of the week is Watch Dogs being canceled. We'll come back to that. Uh, Gifford, his worst of the week is... <laughs> it's not a game, but the NSA <laughs> the, the NSA downloaded 500 million address books without a warrant, and Donald, and Cle- <laughs> Donald Senator Donnelly clearly did not read my email. He, he wrote a mail this article nope. about... <laughs> Of the the CISPA bill that is currently in in the Senate or has been approved by the Senate or whatever, um, and how it relates to uh, internet privacy and gaming, and uh, actually sent it to uh, sent sent the letter to uh, our senator, and uh, he got like some de facto response about it. it was pretty disappointing. He sure did. <laughs> uh, that was pretty funny though that he posted the picture of it, and then um, yeah, I laughed. Coop's worst of the week: the fact that I didn't get to play anything other than Dead Island. <laughs> Uh, better weeks ahead, uh, Coop. Uh, but I, I mentioned Watch Dogs delay. Uh, I believe that's your worst of the week. Yeah, next to the PS4 costing over a thousand dollars in Brazil, Watch Dogs. <laughs> yeah, Watch Dogs is delayed. That came and that's out, that was surprising. Yeah, that was really just out of nowhere. Like I was just at work, you know, doing work, and then. What? My Twitter, my Twitter feed just randomly. I see a person go, "Watch Dogs is delayed," and I was like, "Is this person joking?" And then the next person trickles down. The next person, and I'm like, "Oh my god, it's real!" Once three people say it on Twitter, it's real. So a ton of celebrities that are still alive are actually dead, and Watch Dogs <laughs> is canceled. <laughs> it's, I mean, not canceled, but delayed. It's that canceled be... for 2013 and approved for 2014. Man, that's that would have been sadder news if it was canceled. I mean, they got they... that far and they advertised it, and they were like, you know, they were. They're pushing it. They're not pushing it. I don't feel like they're pushing it as hard as Black Flag, but I also never really understood no. why that game was coming out so close to Black Flag anyway. Uh, but I think yeah, it was, I don't know. For those of us that have actually pre-ordered a console, um, it seemed to be that Watch Dogs was going to be our go-to launch title. So that was kind of that's kind of disappointing. Me. Um, but you know, I will also want them to get it right, and I, you know, I never, you know. The holiday season is crowded enough with games. If you move a couple, I'm not going to be too upset. But yeah, uh, I think I actually when when I found out, I I tweeted that I I wished Ubisoft would then bump up the South Park release date. Get that get that into November into that slot. Don't put that in December where it's going to get completely lost because like, you've got another game out there and that it's totally different than the other stuff you're releasing. So use you know move South Park up to Watch Dogs slot. Yeah, they had pushed South Park up that. I think that could have done them some favors there, but I don't know how much they care. I'm interested yeah. to know where the stick of truth is in terms <laughs> of, you know, how much faith do they have in this South Park game? Yeah. I've heard all kinds of rumors about it, like, from that it's been done since March to... Um, wow. Yeah. So, I don't know. I was... Ubisoft's being a little weird. They were weird last year, though. They pushed out Far Cry yeah. in December, and that ended up being one of my favorite games of the year. So, um, you know... At le- you know, get Watch Dogs yeah, right. Know. Get Watch Dogs right. There's no reason to release it in the same quarter as your as Assassin's Creed. That makes no sense. Yeah. Either. And um, but it was just weird that they they delayed it so close to its actual release. And yeah, so close. They had been like pushing it. They had been marketing it really hard up to that point too. So it seemed like it was coming out. But yeah, know. it was what they had it on. What, whenever there, there was like a special event, they had it on Jimmy Fallon or whatever when yeah. he does his video game week, and like everyone's playing it, and they're like, Watch Dogs, Watch Dogs. And then Watch Dogs go to 2014. <laughs> uh, uh-huh. my, my, my Watch Dogs, my worst of the week <laughs> um, is Mutant League Football. Uh, the Kickstarter failed kind of miserably, <laughs> if I can throw that word out there. Wow. Well, they wanted 750K. They raised 140K. 
Um, Sounds about right. Like they, yeah, they, you know, they broke down the costs, and I don't know. It was just I love the idea of another mutant league game, absolutely. But um, I couldn't tell if like they were trying to make the mobile game the primary version of this game, and so it, because of that, asking for almost a million dollars for for a mobile game just kind of out of the blue. That's ridiculous. Like, yeah, it was just it was. It wasn't as bad as, say, um, the Eternal Darkness Kickstarter, the sequel to that. Uh, I already forgot the name of it. Um, the, <laughs> I don't remember. Um, Shadows of the Eternals. Like, they weren't that disconnected, no. but I, th- they said they're going to regroup. They're not going to give up on the game. And I think there's something to be done here, but um, I don't know. Like, uh, you're not going to get this game entirely funded by your fans. You're going to have to get some something else if you want to make a significant Mutant League game. So... Um, but yeah, I, I want to see that. I want to see that franchise. I want to see an alternative. Uh, like I loved those alternative sports games during like the 16-bit era. Like I loved, um, you know, the baseball simulator games, the base wars. Yeah. I like, I want some some sort of option like that. I want, you know, I want another Ben Bill Lambert's combat basketball. I want something. <laughs> um, but um, I don't know if Kickstarter is going to be the way to go for for one of these to get it get it back on the map. But probably not stuff like that sounds just so niche it's just yeah. kind of like it fits a certain crowd of people and i don't know if there's enough of them to pay <laughs> for that development yeah i don't know yeah there's just something weird about that one from the beginning but it's still sad that it sad to see it fail um best of the week though we'll start with coop um he got into the steam family sharing beta and i believe has shared his library with everybody in chat so I'm stealing it right now. Get, get on there. Uh, <laughs> and Gifford's worst of the week. Um, he had our oh, best of the week. Excuse me. He he had a big drunken Mass Effect three random multiplayer experience with his, one of his buddies this weekend. That sounds like a lot of fun. Uh, wow. Yeah. Um, I'm surprised. He, well, I'm surprised and not surprised. He's still playing Mass Effect three multiplayer. I, that, I mean, that multiplayer. I think people really love that multiplayer. So. Um, it was fun. You know, add some drinks to it. Why not? Um, then um, Cole's best of the week is Watch Dogs being canceled because there's too many games anyway. <laughs> and <laughs> Brought it full circle. Uh, but Nomar came back around. His best of the week is just the fact that he's getting to stream on his new computer. So good uh, good luck out there in the live streaming world, sir. Um, well, why don't you go with your best of the week? My best of the week, I believe, happened at the be- uh, beginning of this week, and apparently there was some kind of panel happening with Grand Theft Auto, and they had the voice actors there that do uh, Trevor, Michael, and Franklin, and I got a uh, fans in front of the mic asking a, like a two-part question. First part, uh, pretty normal, normal question. Who cares what that was? Mm-hmm. The second part was not a question, but a request more that the voice actor that does Trevor would tell the questionnaire to go fuck himself. <laughs> and it's it just the idea of it just seems ridiculous, but I mean if you play Grand Theft Auto Five or even see anything about it, Trevor is the crazy unhinged guy of the game. Yeah. And so and he's got a very distinct voice. And so what happens after that, like everyone in the crowd like, goes nuts. Like this is hilarious. And then instead of just sitting at the table and telling the fan to go fuck himself, <laughs> he he stands up and just like walks just like Trevor, just saunters That's... up to the guy's camera, grabs it, and just screams, "Go fuck yourself!" <laughs> it was terrifying. And I was like, it was the scariest thing in the world, and it was it was awesome. <laughs> like, it seemed like a dumb fan request. I'm like, this is just like a goofy kind of throwaway thing, but I'm he so glad it. that guy yeah. asked it. He did it right. Trevor did it right. <laughs> he's, I mean, he's got to live in that moment. Like, there's, I mean, Trevor is the talk of that game, and yeah, um, I, you know, just the fact that those voice actors kind of look like it, he looks like they based it off of he looks, off his look. Yeah, and it really was like Trevor ran up to this guy, grabbed. I mean, it was like it was obviously like his cell phone camera. His it was the vertical uh, camera angle, but like shook the whole. It was it was. I was like. 
he actually looked like he was pissed off. Like, he didn't really, I don't know, for a moment there, like, holy shit, Trevor's coming after you, dude. This could go really sideways. <laughs> and, uh... Yeah. No, I, I would have shit my pants. Yeah, I got a, <laughs> I got a pretty big kick out of it. Um, I believe his name is uh, Stephen Ogg. I hope I'm saying that right. I know I'm saying Stephen right, but that's the guy who voices and is Trevor's based off of. But, yeah, he's a cool guy for doing that. My best of the week... Borderlands 2 will not die. So, <laughs> I guess I missed this, but Gearbox announced they're going to do three more DLCs, uh, kind of this Headhunter, Headhunter pack that um, is bringing new areas and a, a new boss fight uh, to the game. And they announced their first one. Um, TK Baja's Bloody Harvest uh, is coming out on October 22nd. Uh, it's going to be kind of Halloween-themed. And uh, the boss, you're going to be going after the Pumpkin, pumpkin Kingpin. And, uh, <laughs> dude, more Borderlands 2. Like, um... They'll never die. You know, say what you will about Gearbox or everything else, but I you can't go wrong with uh, more Borderlands, so... I, I was reminded earlier today that I played Aliens Colonial Marines. It made me so mad. I, I was... Re- my only solace in that, I did buy it pre-release, but I got, like, 10 or 12 bucks off the game when I bought it. And I played literally the one multiplayer session that we streamed <laughs> and was yeah. just... I was bored out of my mind other than playing with um, some good friends. Like, like playing that four-player was somewhat redeemable because we're laughing at it together, but holy... Yeah. Yeah. Holy shit. So I hopefully... I don't know. I'll be curious to see what Gearbox does next. Like, I just... I, um, they could... Yeah. The smart money is to just cower behind Borderlands and keep putting all your effort into it. Um, but I know they have a ton of other projects too. So, um, but yeah, I, they should do a lot of Borderlands because I mean, people like Borderlands. Borderlands good, but it would be nice to see them do something new that's not like a license for anything else. Just you know, put something new out there, gain some you know some faith back. Yeah, yeah. Do for Duke Nukem and Aliens, just do something positive. Yeah. Um, we're going to get out of here with, uh, our final question of the week for you, Aaron, was it two weeks ago now? Uh, we had a magical experience yeah. in Pandaria, uh, where we went back to World of Warcraft for the first time in forever and both made Panda characters. Um, we've had a little time to settle. I don't think either of us have touched the game since. I don't really have plans to <laughs> go back, but, uh, any, any parting thoughts for your Panda that was the goofiest shit I've probably ever done in World of Warcraft. <laughs> it, it was nice to see how World of Warcraft evolved since I last played it, but I, I can't, in good faith, give them money <laughs> for more World of Warcraft, but it was funny seeing pandas. Yeah. That whole intro story, the fact that the island we finally discovered was a turtle, that was kind of funny. A little interesting rather than it just being the regular wherever Warcraft well, takes just, place. You know how long that game's been around and that, that, that world's been around. It's like you, coming up with the excuse as to why are pandas just now coming into the fold. Like it's always kind yeah. of silly. It's like you've got your goblin island and now you've got your panda island. And um, uh, that seeing how they work them into the story. I was actually kind of put off by how it dropped us into the world. Like because the whole thing at the end of the... The panda yeah. opening section is you choose if you want to be Horde or Alliance, which is actually kind of cool that you can that you can pick. Um, one they yeah. didn't really set up, they didn't really set up story wise a good reason to choose one or the other. Not at all. And then and then they they just literally they put you in a hot air balloon and it takes you to the mainland. But when it loads up, you're just on the ground. It's not like you like approach the mainland. It was it was very. Yeah. I expected something a little bit smoother, but it was. Uh, um, I don't know. I'm glad we did it. It was, uh, and I'm glad. I'm, I'm really appreciative that you jumped in because I don't think I would have made it through by myself. It was no problem. It, it was fun. I I figured I'd jump on it. I wasn't sure if you would get many other takers. Seeing as <laughs> it was World of Warcraft, but I was like, it's installed. I'll jump on. It'll be kind of funny. Yeah. So I don't know why I don't know why I chose that time to do that, but mark that off the list anyway. So <laughs> bucket list play yeah. as a panda and <laughs> wow. <laughs> Remove the panda bucket list. That's that's it. <laughs> that's it tonight for top video game podcast of the week. Aaron, thanks again for jumping on. 
chat. Got to catch them all. <laughs> chat, thanks for all of your answers once again. And we'll be back again next week with another show. More questions, more best of the worst, more video games, less pandas. We'll see you. More Pokemon. Probably. <laughs> <laughs>